So starting over from scratch, I planned everything out. I wanted to go full unified, but I didn't want to break the bank. So I kind of held out a little while and was, you know, looking at used options, seeing what was out there on eBay and whatnot. And then all of a sudden the Unify Express comes out. A $150 router that's got the Unify controller on it. It's got everything I need. I don't have to spend the $300 that you do for the next thing up. But they're not expensive for no reason. They do make some good products and they make some really good software, it was, which is what you really pay for. But let me show you my setup now that I've got everything in place. So here is the Unify Express and the Unify Mini Switch here. Let's show you size comparison with the Nintendo Switch controller. It's like the same exact length as a Nintendo Switch controller. That's pretty funny. So this has got everything I need on it. It's got an access point, meaning that it's broadcasting my Wi-Fi signal. It's got a gigabit ethernet connection, which you know you, you, you would be paying more for a two gig. It had to stay within that price point. I imagine they couldn't add two gig to it or higher. Um, it's got the little LCD screen on the front, giving you some statistics. It's running the Unify controller. I think the official software build that's on it, I forget what they call it, let me see. So the Unify Express runs Unified Network. That's what it's called. It doesn't have all of the Unify software built into it, like Cloud Key or Network Video Recorder. So it still can incorporate other Unify devices into the ecosystem. It just doesn't come with those by default. But if you don't need them, like me, then you're all set. If you're interested in adding those Unify cameras later on, they can always be added later on. So you're not stuck with this device. This device will always be useful. Even if I upgrade to another router, like a, a more powerful rack mounted router, this Unify device will still serve a purpose. It will still serve as like an access point. I love that everything is kind of interchangeable and nothing becomes useless just because it's gotten replaced. Well, until it becomes end of life, but we, we're not there yet. But I mean, it's got everything you need. It's got VLAN support, it's got firewalls, it's got VPN. The only features that it really doesn't have are the suspicious activity features, also known as the IDS or IPS features. Those are on the more expensive devices, but still you can solve that with like an open source solution. So where do we go from here? My Unify Express is right here. I've got my switch right here. How is this all connected? This is my WAN ethernet that's coming from ISP. This ethernet is going over to the switch and that's pretty much it for the back of the Unify Express. It's got my power cable that's connected via USB-C and it's got a little reset button on the back. That's it, super simple. So our little Unify mini switch over here, this ethernet goes into port one. On port two, that goes into an ethernet to coax adapter. So this connects to an ethernet port on that converter that converts that into coax, which goes into the wall because I already have that wired. I don't have ethernet wired through this house. So on the other end of this, which is in the office, there's another converter that takes that coax and converts it back into ethernet and kind of puts everything back together. And that's going into the server rack over in the back that I'll show you later. All right, so quick detour before we get to the server rack. This little guy right here is the U6 extender by Unify. I have it over here near the back door. So it gives Wi-Fi to the back patio. This coverage is okay on the Unify Express, but it's more meant for indoors in the living room and also kind of the, the main central point for kind of controlling everything with the Unify controller. So this basically bounces right off the Unify Express, which is in the other room. This is in the kitchen, which is closest to the back patio. And this gives us some good coverage on the back patio. I can show you a little bit later how it actually works and how everything switches around. I'll do a quick walk around the house and show you how Unify controls everything and bounces me off of the different access points around the house. I have three access points. This one, the Unify Express that we just saw, and then I have another access point over by the server rack. So I have pretty much full coverage all around the house. I love it. Let's go to the server rack. All right, so let's work our way up from the top to the bottom. First up, we have our monitor here for troubleshooting purposes. We have our BB droid for network security. And then we have our Unify access point here. This is a Unify light. So this is sort of the other point of the triangle that takes care of the back of the house as well as a little bit outdoors in the front yard. And then of course the office and, and some of the bedrooms back here. That's connected to power over ethernet. So I don't have to actually plug it into the wall or anything. And that gets routed in here into this mess of cables that I'll have to organize eventually 
All right, so first off, we have our patch panel. If you don't know really what patch panels are for, it's more for organization. Uh, I'm sure there's other uses for it. Some nice people will probably let me know in the comments. This is actually a unique kind of um, patch panel that I hadn't seen before. The ones I saw in school where you had to actually wire the back of these. So the back, it just has a standard ethernet connection plugged in, which is what these blue cables are. And then on the front are just, you know, your obvious uh, female connectors on there. So it's just female to female, which makes it a lot easier. Not a lot of wiring. You just kind of plug it in the back, plug it in the front. And now we have our patch panel all set up. So this is my eight port switch. So this is one of the newer devices that I got when I kind of went fully unified. So everything that can use power over ethernet is plugged into the first four ports. And then the second four are just, you know, regular one gig ethernet. So over to the next device, this is the mini PC that actually used to host my PFSense router. You can see here, yeah, you can see it has two ethernet ports. One was for the WAN, one was for the LAN, and I used to, to rock my uh, my PFSense router here. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think I should run on it. I've got a couple of things here that aren't actually doing anything right now, um, and I don't really know what to do with them. I'm, I'm, I've got some, some ideas, but nothing set in stone yet. So let me know if you got any ideas what I should run. This also kind of falls into that same boat. This is actually a Raspberry Pi 4. If you follow the channel, I did a video on running Jellyfin on a Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the case that I used for it. That Raspberry Pi 4 is still in there. I no longer have Jellyfin installed because I have Jellyfin installed on my NAS now. So if you got some Raspberry Pi 4 ideas, uh, let me know. This right here is a server I use for testing at work. It's just running Ubuntu, nothing really exciting. This is a rack just for anything extra, just a 1RU space so I can plug more devices in as I get them because you know I be hoarding. Um, down here we have the big boy, we have the NAS. So this is kind of all one unit. These are the drives for it. I've got, just got two big drives there going. I'm gonna be adding more here soon. I don't need them just yet. This is gonna store a lot of my old footage on it. Um, it's storing pictures, videos, just, you know, what a NAS would do. It's also running Jellyfin as well. So um, I've done a little testing with it. It's got a little i5 in there, you know, old Dell unit. I painted it a little bit. I wanted to give it kind of a Star Wars theme. Um, you could see that in the in the other video, kind of how, how it all came to be. I'll link that in the description and, and maybe put a card for it at the end. But yeah, it was a lot of fun building this guy. It, it's, um, it's running, yeah, it's running true NAS. So this is running true NAS. Ow, get my hand on the fan right there. I am really happy with how everything turned out. Unify is pretty much a set it and forget it. It's super easy. It's probably the most powerful slash user-friendly ecosystem you can get into. With the amount of power that you have, you would expect to have to do a lot of setup and have to have a lot of knowledge to get it to where you want it to be. But it's super easy to set up. Like a, a complete novice can have a very good small business caliber network in their home and and really be utilizing a lot of the the technology that professionals are using in their homes so you can't beat it for the price honestly if those price points are still a little bit too high you know don't worry about it you can still go open source you can still do the work and get just as good as quality but from where where i am in my life i want everything to just be simple set it and forget it Disney Plus stops working or, you know, we can't get Curious George in the house anymore. Panic will ensue and I don't want to have to be IT technician for an angry toddler. No. But until next time, peace.